So I'm George Wilson, and um, I am the security development team lead in the IBM Linux Technology Center. And I've been uh, working in the LTC now for about 14 and a half years. And uh, slowly we've been uh, rolling out uh, various security improvements. Um, we uh, now are primarily focused on the power platform. And um, we've been working uh, to um, think about how we might extend uh, our boot security up into guest land. I promise you this will not be a very long presentation because we haven't put a lot of thought into it yet. Uh, this may be the least baked presentation that you see this entire conference, but uh, I'd like to get some ideas before we go off and do something silly and stupid uh, and get some reaction from you. Um, so standard disclaimer, um, these are my views, not necessarily IBM's, and none of this stuff may ever make it into a product. So uh, just so you're aware of that. So I presented last year on uh, adding secure and trusted boot to our open power host platform. And um, this is all well and good. Uh, Claudio's talked about uh, our work and, and how we're using the TPM as our root of trust for OS's. Uh, Gurney's talked about uh, secure virtual machines. But uh, what about ordinary uh, guest boot security? Um, this is something that we have left unaddressed uh, thus far. And uh, we've just started having some internal conversations about it. So this is really an externalization of some of those uh, internal conversations we've had with uh, our um, colleagues who work in uh, the power VM security side of things. Um, so um, guests should have boot security as well as hosts, and those keys should be manageable by administrators much as they are for hosts. Uh, you, you may want uh, your own uh, uh, kernel signed under your own key authority. Uh, there are any number of reasons that you may want to provide a, an experience in the virtual environment, very much like the host environment. Um, secure boot is required for the operating system protection profile 4.1 and higher. Uh, this doesn't exclude guests. So uh, we need to get our act together uh, if we're going to meet the requirements of that protection profile. And um, there has been uh, some thought as to how we would do secure boot on power VM uh, logical partitions. Uh, whatever we do for Linux needs to be compatible with what we're doing for AIX. Uh, and um, that's an important consideration here. And uh, we also want to reuse the same work we're doing for the host environment. We don't want to have a different signature format, say, for, for these kernels than we do for the host kernels. So this is this elaborate diagram is, is sort of a condensation of what I, I had uh, presented last year. Uh, we've instrumented uh, the uh, entire firmware stack uh, all the way uh, up through um, ski root at this point, which uh, is the uh, environment that, um, it's an init RAMFS environment um, uh, running Linux, uh, and it has the Petty Boot application uh, that launches the final kernel. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we've had the, the, our lower firmware folks add instrumentation for trusted computing. Uh, we extend those out to the, the TPM. Um, and um, uh, we're currently working on securely booting uh, the OS kernel. And uh, it's, as I said last year, it's more difficult than you might think, and, and it has proved to be more difficult uh, than we even anticipated. Uh, but uh, uh, we're learning through the design process, and um, I, I think we're pretty close to having a reasonable design and, and uh, uh, actually realizing uh, a full end-to-end -end secure boot, um, hopefully by the end of the year. I, that's, that, that's, that's my tentative uh, stake in the ground. 
But anyway, this is a, a fairly uh, complex environment. Uh, there are a number of layers uh, to it, um, and um, uh, you know it's it's much more complex than the guest environment. So, and this is kind of running off the page, but uh, so anyway, uh, the Power VM um, guest boot environment. So th this runs on top of the Power VM hypervisor, which is a bare metal hypervisor that is IBM's proprietary hypervisor that's been running on uh, our Power PC servers um, since the uh, early 90s. And um, so uh, it already is verified by the host secure boot mechanism. Um, and uh, uh, there is uh, firmware that's provided uh, for the logical partitions um, is, is just part of our firmware stack, and, and that's uh, open firmware. Uh, we, you know, refer to it as uh, partition firmware. And uh, the AIX uh, bootloader and kernel are shipped together as a unit. And uh, uh, the big difference on uh, Linux here is, you know, it's, it's not just some um, blob. It's separated into a bootloader and a kernel. And... Um, so, um, uh, and, and this, this is how, how it's uh, actually done uh, for KVM. Um, there's a different uh, firmware component. Uh, we don't have partition firmware. We have this, this Linux host, QMU, and then uh, Slimline open firmware, which is, uh, as the name implies, a smaller uh, version of partition firmware that provides hypercalls and, and all the things that largely uh, partition firmware provides uh, on PowerVM. And generally, you know, we use Grub to, to load the, the guest kernel. So we, we have these, these sort of two different uh, um, environments, one provided by PowerVM and then one provided by uh, KVM running on open power. So two, two different hypervisors, two different firmware stacks. So there's a proposed um, scheme for securely booting um, these uh, uh, kernels on uh, PowerVM. Um, we already have this convenient container uh, encapsulation format, not to be confused with user space containers, but um, uh, just an encapsulation structure. Uh, and um, that's what we use for uh, encapsulating the pieces of our firmware for host secure boot. So our um, PowerVM firmware folks said, well, we have this structure already, why don't we reuse it? And um, instead of having, um, uh, here's, here's a picture of the structure from uh, last year's presentation. Uh, so instead of um, having hardware keys and firmware keys, why don't we have firmware keys that sign software keys? And uh, so that's how they're encapsulating the AIX bootloader and uh, guest kernel. And uh, this is provided by IBM, has an IBM public key, very straightforward, um, complete um, IBM Blue stack there. Um, and uh, uh, everything you need can, can be provided just with a, a simple uh, firmware load, and then um, the, uh, the bootloader and kernel will be verified uh, when you boot. But, um, you know, we, we have a problem when um, we uh, have to boot up um, our uh, KVM guests on open power. And we also have a problem of, you know, how do we, uh, how do we boot up Linux on uh, PowerVM and how do we make those two things uh, compatible? So one thing that we could do is just port our host solution. Why wouldn't we do that? Uh, well, our host solution uses Pettyboot and it's one of the only things that uses Pettyboot. Um, and the distro uh, QMU guests generally boot with Grub. Uh, uniformly, and uh, we don't want to um, make 
are power guests an exception to that? Um, moreover, uh, so Petty Boot runs in this Linux uh, init RAMFS environment, and normally that'd be a really good thing. Uh, but it turns out that PowerVM negotiates capabilities uh, with the guest kernel. And since Petty Boot in this environment would be the first guest kernel to boot up, which is actually going to boot up the payload kernel, um, there is not an ability to renegotiate capabilities with the firmware, not easily, not without doing some surgery. Uh, so our firmware uh, folks uh, uh, did not like that uh, uh, approach at all. And um, we also want one that, want, you know, to, uh, you know, make this easy uh, to go between the, the two different hypervisors that we have. So um, it's a much simpler boot environment. Um, we don't really need the elaborate key structure, we don't think, uh, that we've uh, been working on for the host environment. So why don't we do something that's simpler? Um, and uh, uh, so the, um, the partition firmware or, or sloth can just make use of uh, perhaps uh, an indirection much like uh, x86 has with the shim. So simplified view of, of an x86 boot, it emulates the host uh, solution uh, and the shim provides this layer of indirection so that um, you know, it can be signed by um, uh, generally Microsoft, and uh, the OS um, can be signed by, you know, the distro provider or, or whatever key authority that you like. Uh, and um, it, it's uh, interesting to observe that, um, and one of the problems I think we need to solve is, you know, the um, hypervisor validating the uh, firmware which doesn't appear to be done uh, on the x86 side uh, nowadays. Um, so here's maybe a guess at what uh, this might look like. Um, for uh, booting on PowerVM, uh, very similar to the, the Microsoft Secure Boot problem, um, we need to be able to sign um, something that provides us a layer of indirection. We can't get an awful lot of reuse out of the x86 shim. It's a UEFI application, um, and uh, it's, it's very EFI specific. Um, we can learn from it. Uh, we could use um, uh, maybe similar variable format for compatibility, um, but um, uh, it's, uh, it's not a lot of reuse here. So we would be implementing our own shim uh, and basically just managing the, this, uh, this sort of uh, mock database uh, uh, directly. And uh, um, then we could also uh, make use of Grub, um, which um, already has a convenient callback mechanism. So uh, very much like on x86, we could have the, the shim verify uh, Grub, Grub call back into the shim, and then uh, uh, verify the, the guest kernel, and also get our trusted computing measurements uh, via that route, um, since we can't build them into Grub. We have a little bit different problem uh, for uh, open power KVM. Um, IBM uh, wouldn't be providing um, sloth or the shim directly, so uh, we would need to have the ability to uh, uh, change the public key, public uh, private key pair actually, uh, that we're using for signing the shim. Uh, and um, once again, I don't think we need an elaborate uh, key management framework, much like we, we built on the host that, that uh, we, you know, we, we've tried to, to reuse some Tiano core concepts uh, there, but I, I don't think we need as much of that mechanism uh, because the, the guest boot environment is uh, so much simpler. Um, we could build key management into partition firmware or SLOF. Um, that's probably my favorite place for it. Uh, we could put it into the shim. I, I think we already have uh, 
some precedent for adding um, um, user interface features, I know, for trusted computing. They, they've been added to Sloth. Uh, it'd be easy to add to partition firmware as well. And uh, of course, you can still manage keys from the host environment if you want to on, uh, on QMU. Um, so <coughs> what about verifying the firmware? Um, uh, right now, it looks like this is a gap. And uh, you know maybe we don't need to address it for our first pass, but ultimately, we would want a completely verified stack. Uh, one option might be to use um, to just to mandate IMA in the uh, host environment and uh, let IMA measure the firmware. Uh, that doesn't really give control to the, um, the uh, guest administrator necessarily, but that is, is probably a lot better than no verification at all. Uh, and that might be good for a first pass. And then uh, maybe we can think about how we could uh, uh, create a, a layer of indirection for that uh, in the future. But um, so to summarize, uh, as I said, we, we've only recently begun thinking about this. Um, I've, I've put down very much what our conversations have been so far uh, internally uh, into the slide uh, set. Uh, we must have a common solution across our hypervisors. We want to reuse as much as we can already, uh, build upon uh, uh, the concepts and code that, that already exist uh, on the x86 side, largely. Um, we must have the whole stack from, top, uh, from, from bottom to top uh, verified, and we want to keep it as simple as possible for administrators. So with that, I have some references here, um, largely ones that, that Claudio already uh, had presented. And so I'd welcome any reactions, questions, suggestions that anybody might have um, uh, for us um, as we think about how we're going to securely boot guests. And if, that, if none, then I'll come back next year and tell you what we decided. <laughs> Well, this is just a little bit off topic here, but I think we should all give a big, big round of applause for our Master of Ceremonies, James. Yeah. All right, thank you, everyone. Okay, well, uh, that wraps it up uh, for this year's event. Uh, so we've had more talks and more people attending than, than ever and at this rate you know if it keeps continuing then uh, next year I guess we'll have even more uh, content so one of the issues we've had this year I think is not having enough break time not enough time for, for people to collaborate and I guess we could have you know tried to reduce the number of talks we accepted we actually did cut back five minutes we we're struggling to fit things in that actually helped stopping us running over another hour and a half today or so uh, so but I think one question is would We've, we've discussed this a few times in the past in the program committee. Would people be interested in going to a third day and having a more relaxed, you know, starting at nine and finishing at five and having longer breaks for hallway sessions and then potentially having some time for workshops or hacking sessions and so on? Would that make everyone then too exhausted after three days or is it better to keep it in two days? Uh, any, so any, anyone who thinks three days is better, raise your hand. Okay, so that, that's something we can take back to the Linux Foundation folk. It's, it's uh, quite difficult to... Uh, yes. Do you... Possibly. I'm not quite sure how we'd do multiple tracks. We've, yeah, we've talked about that as well. Um, it seems probably everyone wants to go to just about every session, I think. Um, but probably the next thing will be to, to talk to the Linux Foundation folk. It's quite difficult to get. Uh, resources allocated. Um, so if anyone has any feedback, please let us know. The, our email address is on the, on the website. If you go down, we'll have the program committee. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for uh, the enthusiasm and, and uh, all of the, the good ideas and discussions uh, and the presenters. And also, obviously, a great thanks to the, uh, to the sponsors and the, uh, the Linux Foundation folk who, who did all the logistics. So thanks. Thank you.